Hello friend, welcome to my YouTube channel, Gajpal A Learnings. In this video we are going to study about the skeletal system, which is a part of B Pharmacy first semester, Human Anatomy and Physiology part 1. So let's get started. Contents to be covered in this video is Skeletal system, types of bone, salient features and functions of bones of axial and appendicular skeletal system, organization of skeletal muscle, physiology of muscle contraction, our first topic is Introduction to Skeletal System. The skeletal system refers to the framework of bones, joints, and connective tissues that support and protect our bodies. It provides structure, stability, and shape to the body, allowing us to stand, move, and perform various activities. The bones in our skeletal system also serve as a storehouse for minerals, such as calcium, and produce red and white blood cells. Overall, the skeletal system plays a vital role in supporting our bodies and enabling us to perform daily tasks. Now the next is, Division of Skeletal System. The skeletal system can be divided into two main divisions, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. First, axial skeleton. This division includes the bones that form the central axis of the body. It consists of the following components, that is, skull. The skull is made up of several bones that encase and protect the brain, including the cranium, skull cap, and facial bones. Next, vertebral column, also known as the spine or backbone. The vertebral column consists of a series of individual bones called vertebrae. It provides support and flexibility to the body, protects the spinal cord, and allows for various movements. Next, ribs and sternum. The rib cage is composed of ribs and the sternum, breastbone. Ribs attach to the thoracic vertebrae at the back and connect to the sternum in the front. They protect vital organs, such as the heart and lungs. Note, the axial skeleton system have total 80 bones that are Skull, 22 bones Rib cage, 25 bones Vertebrae, 26 bones Ear ossicles, 6 bones And hyoid bone, 1 Now the second is Appendicular skeleton This division includes the bones of the limbs and their associated girdles. It consists of the following components. First of all, upper limbs. The bones of the upper limbs include the humerus, upper arm bone, radius and ulna, forearm bones, carpals, wrist bones, metacarpals, hand bones, and phalanges, finger bones. Next, lower limbs. The bones of the lower limbs include the femur, thigh bone, tibia and fibula, leg bones, tarsals, ankle bones, metatarsals, foot bones, and phalanges, toe bones. Next, pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle, or shoulder girdle, consists of the scapulae, shoulder blades, and clavicles, collarbones. It attaches the upper limbs to the axial skeleton. Next, pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle consists of the hip bones, ilium, ischium, and pubis. It supports the lower limbs and connects them to the axial skeleton. Note, the appendicular skeleton system have total 126 bones that are shoulder girdles, 4 bones. Arms and forearms, 6 bones. Hands, 54 bones. Pelvis, 2 bones. Thighs and legs, 8 bones. And feet and ankle, 52 bones. Types of bones. Basically, there are 5 main types of bones in the human body. First, long bones. These bones are characterized by their elongated shape and include bones such as the femur, thigh bone, tibia, and fibula, leg bones, as well as the humerus, upper arm bone and radius and ulna, forearm bones. Long bones provide support, leverage, and mobility. Second, short bones. Short bones are roughly cube-shaped and provide stability and support to facilitate movement. Examples of short bones include the bones of the wrist, carpals, and ankle, tarsals. Third, flat bones. Flat bones are thin, flat, and often curved, providing protection and serving as attachment sites for muscles. Examples of flat bones include the skull bones, scapulae, shoulder blades, sternum, breastbone, and ribs. Fourth, irregular bones. Irregular bones have complex shapes that do not fit into the categories mentioned previously. These bones often have unique functions and structures. Examples of irregular bones include the vertebrae, which form the spinal column, and the bones of the pelvis. Fifth, chasomoid bones. Chasomoid bones are small, rounded bones that are embedded within tendons serving to protect the tendon from excessive wear and improve its mechanical function. The patella, kneecap, is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Now our next topic is, 
Features and Functions of Bones of Axial and Appendicular Skeletal System First, Axial Skeleton Under this, first, Skull Bones The skull bones enclose and protect the brain. They also house the sensory organs, such as the eyes, ears, and nose. Additionally, the skull provides attachment points for muscles involved in chewing and facial expressions. Second, Vertebral Column the vertebrae form the vertebral column or spine, which protects the spinal cord. The vertebrae are stacked on top of each other, allowing flexibility and providing support to the body. They also provide attachment sites for muscles and ligaments. Third, ribs and sternum. The ribs and sternum form the rib cage, protecting the heart, lungs, and other organs in the thoracic cavity. The ribs also assist in the breathing process by expanding and contracting during inhalation and exhalation. Now the second is, appendicular skeletal system, under this, first, upper limb bones, the bones of the upper limbs, such as the humerus, radius, ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges, provide mobility and dexterity to the hands and arms. They allow us to perform tasks such as grasping, manipulating objects, and engaging in various activities. Second, lower limb bones, the bones of the lower limbs, including the femur, tibia, fibula, tarsals, metatarsals, and phalanges. Support the weight of the body and enable movements such as walking, running, and jumping. They provide stability, balance, and locomotion. Third, pectoral girdle. The pectoral girdle, consisting of the scapulae and clavicles, connects the upper limbs to the axial skeleton. It provides a stable base for arm movements and allows for a wide range of motion in the shoulder joint. Fourth, pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle, formed by the hip bones, that is, ilium, ischium, and pubis that supports the weight of the upper body and provides a sturdy attachment point for the lower limbs. It protects the reproductive organs, urinary bladder, and part of the digestive system. The next topic is, Organization of Skeletal Muscle. Introduction to, Skeletal Muscle. Skeletal muscle is a type of muscle tissue that is responsible for voluntary movements of the body. It is composed of bundles of individual muscle fibers, also known as muscle cells. These muscle fibers are organized in a hierarchical manner to form the structure of skeletal muscle. Here is a breakdown of the organization of skeletal muscle from large to small structures. First, muscle. The whole skeletal muscle is considered an organ and is composed of multiple components, including muscle fibers, connective tissues, blood vessels, and nerves. Second, fascicle. A muscle is made up of several fascicles, which are bundles of muscle fibers. Fascicles are surrounded and separated by connective tissue called perimysium. Third, muscle fiber. Fascicles consist of multiple muscle fibers, also known as myofibers or muscle cells. These muscle fibers are long, cylindrical cells that run parallel to each other within a fascicle. Each muscle fiber is surrounded by a connective tissue layer called endomysium. Fourth, myofibrils. Within each muscle fiber, there are numerous myofibrils. Myofibrils are cylindrical structures that span the entire length of the muscle fiber. They are responsible for muscle contraction and are composed of repeating units called sarcomers. Fifth, sarcomere. Sarcomers are the basic functional units of muscle contraction. They are arranged end to end along the length of the myofibril. Sarcomers are bounded by Z lines and contain two types of filaments, thin actin filaments and thick myosin filaments. Sixth, actin and myosin filaments. Actin and myosin filaments are the proteins responsible for muscle contraction. Actin filaments are thin and attached to the Z lines, while myosin filaments are thick and span the center of the sarcomere. During muscle contraction, myosin filaments interact with actin filaments, causing them to slide past each other and leading to muscle shortening. Next is, Physiology of Muscle Contraction Muscle contraction is a complex physiological process that involves the interaction between actin and myosin filaments within the muscle fibers. Following points are involved in the process of muscle contraction. First, neuromuscular junction. The process of muscle contraction begins with a signal from the nervous system. Motor neurons transmit electrical impulses from the brain or spinal cord to the muscle fibers through structures called neuromuscular junctions. At the neuromuscular junction, the motor neuron releases a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Second, excitation-contraction coupling. When acetylcholine is released, it binds to receptors on the muscle fibers membrane, causing depolarization and the generation of an action potential. 
The action potential spreads along the surface of the muscle fiber and into the T-tubules, transverse tubules, which are invaginations of the muscle cell membrane. Third, calcium release. The action potential in the T-tubules triggers the release of calcium icons from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, a specialized network of membrane-bound compartments within the muscle fiber. Calcium icons bind to a protein called troponin, which is associated with the actin filaments. Fourth, cross-bridge formation. The binding of calcium icons to troponin causes a conformational change, exposing binding sites on the actin filaments. The myosin heads of the thick myosin filaments then bind to these exposed sites on actin, forming cross bridges. Fifth, sliding filament mechanism. Once the cross bridges are formed, the myosin heads undergo a series of conformational changes, known as the power stroke. During the power stroke, the myosin heads pull the actin filaments toward the center of the sarcomere, resulting in the shortening of the muscle fiber. This sliding of actin and myosin filaments is the basis of muscle contraction. Sixth, ATP and relaxation. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy molecule required for muscle contraction. After the power stroke, ATP binds to the myosin heads, causing them to detach from the actin filaments. ATP is then hydrolyzed to ADP, adenosine diphosphate, and inorganic phosphate, providing the energy for the myosin heads to reset and prepare for the next cross bridge formation. When the action potential ceases and calcium icons are actively pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the troponin tropomyosin complex returns to its original position, blocking the binding sites on actin and leading to muscle relaxation. Thanks for watching.